Hi, I'm Jamings. I want to play a game. You guys. Can you count how many hot air balloons appeared in this montage? Now, we have arrived in Teotihuacan. But before that, have you counted the hot air balloons? If your answer is a lot, then you're right! Congratulations! <laughs> your prize is bragging rights! Well, to be fair, the hot air balloons are just there and not the main focus of this vlog, obviously. <laughs> the main focus of today's video is the city and the history of Teotihuacan. We were informed that there are different entrances to this historic site and we entered the one near the Temple of the Feathered Serpent. After passing through some souvenir shops and a building, we are immediately greeted by a magnificent view of this good boy. <laughs> okay, after that, we arrive at a site known as La Ciudadela. The name La Ciudadela, which means the citadel in Spanish, was given by the Spanish colonizers who believed it was a fort. Anyway, La Ciudadela is a huge compound that is surrounded by temples and apartments which can hold up to a hundred thousand people, which is why it is believed to be the main marketplace of the city of Teotihuacan. Now, the main feature of La Ciudadela is the Temple of the Feathered Serpent, which is the third largest pyramid in Teotihuacan. The other two pyramids will be shown later in this video. Unfortunately, when we went there, you couldn't actually climb any of the three pyramids. Unlike in the past, as I was told, the Pyramid of the Sun and the Pyramid of the Moon were open to the public and people can actually climb them. However, a few years ago, they were closed due to, as I understand, the pandemic and people vandalizing the site and taking home some pieces of the site, believing it to contain some sort of power or whatever. Anyway, going back to the Temple of the Feathered Serpent, you may be wondering that if climbing is prohibited, then why are these people climbing this temple? Simple, because that isn't the Temple of the Feathered Serpent. Instead, the steps that the people are climbing is what is called an Adosada platform, which was built in front of the Temple of the Feathered Serpent. It is believed that this platform was built to obstruct the view of the temple when the political beliefs of that time changed. So it's safe to say that we didn't climb a pyramid and instead we went up to the platform in front of the pyramid. Yet, so once we got on top, we were greeted by a view of the Temple of the Feathered Serpent. You can clearly see the steps and some feathered serpent heads along the stairs and on the sides of the temple. Now, don't ask me what this thing on top of the temple is. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's some sort of antenna so that the people of Teotihuacan or the Aztecs can use the internet or whatever. I'm just kidding, obviously. By the way, it's also important to point out that the temple of the feathered serpent is also known as the temple of Quetzalcoatl. Quetzalcoatl. Quetzalcoatl is the feathered serpent deity of the Aztecs and I recommend you guys to read about the feathered serpent deity in Mesoamerica which is called by different names depending on the civilization. After going to La Ciudadela, we then walk along the Avenue of the Dead to go to the Pyramid of the Sun. After crossing the Rio de San Juan, then went on an 800 meter detour to go to the Museo de Teotihuacan. That detour was uneventful to say the least, but at least it took us to the museum beside the Pyramid of the Sun. Inside this museum, as with the last time, you will get to learn about the history, the culture, and the artifacts and ornaments that the people of Teotihuacan have at that time. A lot of these things are on display here, as well as the bones of some human sacrifices that were found buried under a temple. Also, you will see the scale model of the city of Teotihuacan, as well as this perfect view of the Pyramid of the Sun as its background. Now that's just so cool. <laughs> it's very informative as it has an English translation for the Spanish text, and the museum really puts you in an atmosphere to get to know more about Teotihuacan. Now, outside the museum, there's also a bit of an exhibit or maybe even a botanical garden, I'm not sure. But after that, we arrive at the gate that is near the Museo de Teotihuacan and the Pyramid of the Sun. This entrance to the Pyramid of the Sun takes us to the side of the pyramid and what can I say, it's a huge pyramid. One of the largest in the world and it took us maybe 
5 to 10 minutes just to walk around its side. Also, it's very tall. I'm pretty sure my camera angles don't give justice to how big and tall this pyramid actually is. I'm just thankful that it's close to the public. If it was open, I can just imagine my companions dragging me up and down this pyramid. Those steps will kill my legs and also I'm afraid of heights. <laughs> on a side note, I noticed that there is a guard station on the pyramid, probably to stop any visitors from trying to climb since it's close to the public. Thank you for your service, dear pixelated sir. Salute. Now, after going to the Pyramid of the Sun, we returned to the Avenue of the Dead and walked northwards. Apparently, when the Aztecs came, they assumed that the buildings at the side of the road were tombs and henceforth named this road as the Avenue of the Dead. But it turns out that these tombs are residential buildings and small pyramids. I even found this jaguar mural at the side. This road goes on and on with a whole avenue of the dead spanning 4 kilometers long. And at the end of this road is the pyramid of the moon. In front of the pyramid of the moon is what I think is a plaza that is surrounded by platforms or temples. I think there used to be a building in front of the pyramid because of the ruins here and we're going around it we are now at the pyramid of the moon. But this is actually just the first steps of the pyramid. You can't actually see the top of the pyramid from this close. But what you can see from here is the sign that reads, do not climb the monument. <laughs> a companion of mine who have gone up the pyramids before told us that one of the pyramids is steeper than the other. And if I recall, I think it's the pyramid of the moon? But I may be wrong and the steeper one is maybe the pyramid of the sun. I don't know, climbing wasn't allowed so I never found out. <laughs> Now, after going to the Pyramid of the Moon, we then walked to the side and visited the Palacio Quetzalpapalot. Now, I wasn't able to learn much about it since we were already about to leave and there were a lot of people in the place. But I think that this is a residence or palace for the elites of Teotihuacan. You can get that feeling just by looking at how detailed and colorful the design on the pillars and walls are. Very intriguing. It was actually a very small palace or at least the area that is open to the public is very small. So it only took us less than 5 minutes to get in and out of it. Now, before we left, we made sure to check out some souvenir shop before we exited at another gate. Once that's done and we got on our way, we then went on a road trip. Oh, you thought this video was done? Well, almost but not quite. Because it's time for a bonus day. After going to Teotihuacan, we decided to visit El Aqueducto del Padre Tembleque. I actually thought you can only find the aqueducts in Rome. But apparently, an aqueduct was also built here in Mexico back in 1555. And this aqueduct is huge! It spans 48 kilometers long with a maximum height of 39 meters tall. I think it's really cool to show you guys something that I bet you didn't know exists in Mexico. I'm really having a blast learning and exploring Mexico and I hope you guys too through the series of vlogs. <laughs> with that, this is the end for today's video but expect two more videos to come before the end of our adventure. Thanks for watching.